We're going to finish up today on the subject, why am I here? A couple of weeks ago, we talked about part one, why we are here, is because there is potential. There's potential inside of every single person here, old and young alike. There is potential that God has already planted a seed within you. And you know whose responsibility it is to get it out? It's us. God has put that potential. You are here. You have your very existence because God has placed potential into your life. Last week, we talked about the purpose, and we, we preached on the four purposes why that Christ has allowed us to be here, to honor God with our purposes. Because, believe it or not, all this is is just a rehearsal for eternity. You're here for a little while, and then you're going to go somewhere in eternity. We're all going to spend eternity somewhere. And part of that purpose that Christ created us is so that we would be in a relationship with him. So that when we say goodbye here, that we'll have an eternal home with him. Now, what we're going to talk about today here, and we're going to wrap up. We've talked about potential, and we've talked about purpose. And today, with the brevity of life that we have, God intends us to live in pleasure and to understand that there are pleasures. I hope that you really paid attention to the video this morning and you got to see all those stars. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist, it doesn't take an astrophysicist to understand how massive and how big that the Milky Way is. Was that not in cool people in Los Angeles for the first time since they had a lot of all the ambient city lights, they got to see the Milky Way. Man, that is incredible. And we're going to look at the pleasure that Christ has created and to give to us so that we can join on a daily basis. I want you to pay attention and look in the back of your uh, church bulletin. You'll see the message notes. And in th today's message is titled, Enjoying What God Created. We're going to look at Psalm 19, starting with verse 1. Psalm 19, verse 1. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard, yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. And it is phenomenal. I don't know if you've ever been out here at night, out here in the church. And it's pretty awesome. You know, I've flicked off all the night lights out here before, and it gets pretty easy. They, they claim that one out of ten people on any given night can go out and to find the Big Dipper. And I, I, last night when I preached the message, everybody raised their hand and said, yeah, we know where the Big Dipper is. But if you was to look at the stars and you look at the delicacy of all of nature, no one can come to the conclusion that we are here just by random mutation and chance you understand that unequivocally that we are here by design and by creation and so when we look into the heavens and the heavens declare the massive glory of god it is unsearchable but we know that through the balance of what we see of all of god's creation we know that there is a creator we're going to look at four points uh, this morning point number one all of God's creation is a gift to enjoy. Every single bit of God's creation, it is a gift to enjoy. Would you guys write this down? Please write this down because this is what happens. We often forget that all of God's creation is a gift. So please write this down. God gave us one day a week out of the seven to enjoy his creation. Can I get an amen out of that? God said, listen. I understand that humans feel like you got to be a part of the rat race. And you're going to be busy going here and you're going to be busy going over there. So this is, this is what I'm going to give you. One of the commandments out of the ten that I'm going to instruct you with is you're going to take the time one day out of the week to be deliberate, to be intentional, to take time to enjoy the creation that God created for us. And even then, we have a hard time doing that. Can I get an amen? We struggle even with that sometimes. We think that 
you know, we think that we have to do this or we get involved in, in that and we fail to take the time to do this. Now, this is going to be very important um, because we can, we can do one of two things. We can actually do one of three things. They can be misused and then we get into trouble. They can be underused, and then we can get into trouble, or we can decide to use them the way that God it intended. Isn't it, isn't it incredible? God cares for you so much. God loves you so much that before he put humans here, he spent five days creating everything that was amazing for us. Listen, God didn't have to create it for him. On the first day when God said, let there be light, do you think that God created light for him? He created it for us. And all these other, the, all the animals. And like, can you imagine being with Adam? Because Adam got to name the animals. Got to see the giraffe. Got to see the rhino with the horn on its nose. And got to see the elephant and how amazing that would have been to have got to enjoy all of that. Well, here's, here's uh, some basic principles about why God gave us these. And I think that these are important. Number one, we can enjoy them because they are pleasant to all the senses. They are pleasant to all the senses. When you get out and you get to enjoy God's creation, they are pleasant to all the senses. When you... I just, I love touching stuff. I'm kind of a touchy-feely kind of person. I don't know if you're that way, but I love just to go to the farm and pet the animals. Can I get an amen? We used to take the kids. We used to take our children when they were very young. We used to take them to carry chill. Boy, they, they wanted to touch everything. And uh, I don't know if you've ever been there with, with the angry turkey. And when, when the turkey feels like you're getting too close, they, they drag their uh, their feathers on the ground, and that's the sign like, get away, I don't want you touching me. And, and some of you I've seen act that way too. Get away, don't, don't <laughs> stop touching me. <laughs> but there is pleasure, man, there is, it's amazing. It, it thrills the senses. Just maybe, maybe you're the kind of person, you, you love to garden. You love to garden because of the sense of, all the senses coming alive when you're out in the garden, the, the touch. And, and then, of course, there's sight. You, you got to see the video of all the stars and all the star constellation. Man, how awesome was that? I, I, back in 1994, I was out and uh, I was really, really close to Haran. And Haran nowadays is kind of off limits to European people. But Back in 1994, me and my brother, we were really, really close into a community called Haran. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it or not. But in the book of Genesis, it is where God called Abraham out. And it's where God told him and gave him the promise that, that Abraham's seed would be as numerous as the stars. We were up on a mountain, and when we come around one side of the mountain, there was this massive expanse of this big, huge valley. And all of a sudden... I was overwhelmed. I was flooded with the thought that that might have been the exact valley where God spoke to him and said, I want you to look up, Abraham, and I want you to see if you can count the stars. Man, is that not incredible? And I thought, God gave us all of these. And one of the benefits is that we benefit because it is pleasant to all the senses. Secondly, secondly, when we enjoy God's creation, it stimulates us to think about God. It stimulates us to think about God. When you look at God's creation, it stimulates us to think about God. First of all, would you write this one down? Psalm, Psalm 8, verse 4. Psalm 8, verse 4. And this is what the psalmist says. When I look at the night sky... And see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place. What are mere mortals that you should think about them? Human beings that you should care for them. He says, when I see the moon and I understand how the balance of what the moon does. Did you know that there are over 80 different dials on the cosmological dial 
that allows us to have life here on earth. 80 different dials, what they call the cosmological dial. And every single thing on that dial, listen to me, has to be perfect. Has to be perfect. Now, at this time of the year in our hemisphere, it, it's difficult to see the Saturn. So you, you can go outside on a cool, crisp, cold winter night with a big telescope, and you can find the rings of Saturn. My father has one of those big, huge uh, telescopes, and you can get Saturn on there, and you can actually see the rings of Saturn, but it's for a really short time. It starts drifting. Who can tell me why that happens? Because the earth is rotating. We're, you know, we're rotating at 1,000 miles an hour, and we don't feel it, right? I mean, I've drove with some of you, and some of you drive about 1,000 miles an hour. <laughs> but is, isn't this amazing? And then the psalmist mentions the moon. Did you know if the moon was like 2 degrees one closer to the earth, now, we all know, here's a little bit of science, okay? And, and actually, who created science? God did, right? So if the moon was like two degrees tilted more towards the earth, we know at nighttime, the moon affects the waves coming in. If it was two degrees closer to the earth, we would have these big, huge tidal waves coming in. If the earth was tilted one degree off of its axis one way, We'd be too far away from the sun. We'd get too cold. We would freeze. Life would not exist here on earth. If the axis was tilted the other way, then we would be too close to the sun and we would burn up. Life would not exist on the planet of the earth. And so the, it, it is amazing how that the psalmist is, is able to make these conclusions and understand that God created all these things for us. Now, I personally believe that the scripture is actually factual where it says that they don't speak a word, but if you study them and if you look at them close enough of all of God's creation, you're going to come to the conclusion that we are not here by accident. We are here on purpose. Guys, has anybody ever here heard divine proportion? If you've never heard of that, you should write that down and go home and Google it. And it's going to blow your mind. Make sure that if you do do that, put on two pair of socks because it's going to blow one pair of the socks off. It's, it's pretty amazing stuff. Did you know that in divine proportion, when you take the time to study nature and you take the time to look at God's fingerprint all throughout the universe and you start to look at right here on planet Earth, did you know that every single sunflower pod, the design of the sunflower seeds that are in that pot has divine proportion. Did you know that every single pine cone off of every single pine tree, every single species of pine cone has divine proportion, regardless of what continent that that pine tree is on? It has divine proportion. And then this person, his name is Phycobian, when he started studying a little bit more about this, he found out that every single human and every single continent out of every single race, every human's face has divine proportion. Every single human finger has divine proportion. Every single human arm, every single human leg has divine proportion. God has left his fingerprint every single. And as if that's not enough, as if it's not enough, every single seashell, every single snail shell, you guessed it, has divine proportion. Is not God awesome and incredible? So they excite the senses. They stimulate us to think about God. And thirdly, it's because that God's creation helps to keep us alive. Boy, can I get an amen out of that? You know, I can think of three right away. Three of them instantly. And one of them, you do, you're, you're doing right now, and you're not even cognitive about it. You're not even thinking, but you're breathing in oxygen. And boy, if you didn't have oxygen, it would uh, remind you. It would be a quick reminder. I don't know if anybody's ever had the wind knocked out of them before. I remember one time I was, uh, when I was a young man, I was, I was at home, and I was rolling on a barrel. 
and I, I was able to barrel roll. That was back when I was skinny and had a lot of balance, and I was rolling on the barrel. My brother thought it would be really super clever, your younger brother, you younger brothers. He came in behind me and kicked the barrel. And my feet went up in the air, and I landed completely flat on my back, and it knocked the wind out of my lungs. And I was struggling there for a while. It was probably only 10 seconds, but even, even five seconds, it was very uncomfortable. God allows us to have oxygen right at the maximum efficiency rate for our bodies to be in peak performance. How about water? Man, that's something... Did you ever, you ever stop to think that we enjoy the freshest, cleanest water on the planet because of all the regulations that we have to go through to do that? There are some people in third world countries, you will die if you drank their water. It, you, you, your body would just completely shut down. You would be poisoned. And how about this? Something that we're enjoying, if you look outside, you get to see the sunlight. Who here, who here this morning can tell me what vitamin does God's sun give us? Vitamin D. What, what does my name start with? C. Isn't God incredible? Gives us air, gives us water, gives us sunlight to enjoy. And God says, I created all of this for you to take advantage of it, take benefit of it, and for, for you to be able to enjoy all of God's creation. Point number two, we are hardworking healthy, and happy when we enjoy pleasures from God. We are hardworking, we're healthy, we're happy when we enjoy pleasures from God. Oh boy, there's some major benefits from that. Now be honest. Can I see a show of hands? How many people can actually admit that there's been a couple of times in your life where you have run yourself ragged, you've burned the candle at both ends, and man, you just you were you were flat at work. You didn't want the kids to bug you. You didn't want your wife to ask you. How many people could just raise your hand and say, "Yep, that that's been me. I've 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 been run run out. I've been running on fumes." You ever felt that way? Well, that's not the way that God intended us to to be. And when we look at God designed us for potential. And God designed us for purpose. Listen to me very carefully. You will never reach your full potential and you'll never be able to fulfill your life's purpose, your God given purpose, if you're not enjoying God's pleasures. Can I get an amen out of that? If you're not taking the time to enjoy God's pleasure, just let me share some thoughts on this. First, the first thought when we enjoy God's pleasure, we will be relaxed. We will be relaxed. You know you're not relaxed when that alarm clock goes off. And when the alarm clock goes off, you're already under stress and tension because you know you've got something. You're going to walk into an environment that may be toxic or you maybe you've got a big, huge test coming up and... God doesn't want us to operate life out of that, that kind of operation. We have emotional relaxation. We can be relaxed emotionally. It helps us to be able to handle stress. Women, you might want to write this down. Carol, starting very soon, Carol is going to start as part of the women's group. But, but they've done a very interesting story, a very interesting uh, study, and it's been proven time and time and time again. Did you guys know that dudes worry less than what the gals do it's like girls are completely ocd can i get an amen guys go ahead and say amen G guys are like this dude whatever dudes are like I'll, I'll i'll get it later that that that's when football when football season comes in his focus is right there on the tv right don't don't bother me don't ask me to do anything i'm, I'm and the women the women want everything Every, everything just has to be just just right and just like and and, and if, if the kids are riding the bicycles they're worried and if the kids are not riding the bicycles they're worried if the kids are making a lot of noise she's worried if the kids are too quiet she's worried and the dude is like whatever 
And so I'm saying that to say this, women, here's your opportunity. Get with Carol, find out when she's going to, she's going to, she's got the book. She's going to be doing the study on helping women to have more confidence, not in themselves, but to have more confidence, more faith in Jesus Christ. I think it's going to be a great study. But how many times, how many times have we robbed ourselves of good rest and sleep because emotionally, we were, our emotions were just, just going everywhere. We also not only have the benefit of being relaxed emotionally, but we have the benefit of being relaxed mentally. It, it pulls in our focus and allows our energies to be put where it needs to be. We're much more beneficial when we can put our energies in where it needs to be instead of our energies being scattered. And then we're just not able to focus in on what we need to. And then physically, we have increased endurance. Have you ever just been so emotionally and mentally drained that your body just didn't feel good? There, there's been times where I've been in bed. I know I've at least been in bed for six hours, but you just didn't sleep well. You felt like you just didn't. You just felt like you just didn't enjoy or like you didn't even feel like you should have went to bed in the first place. And you'll be able to get more done. When you're, when you're rested, when you're relaxed, emotionally, mentally, and physically, man, you're at your peak performance. You'll get more done. Secondly, is we also enjoy the benefit of being restored. You'll enjoy the benefit of being restored. There are times in your life you're going to need to be restored. And the only way to do that is you literally have to stop and get recharged. You have to be able to do that. Would you guys write this down? Because I think this is important. I'm going to teach you uh, two principles, two major principles. Uh, out of, just write down Psalm 23. There are two major principles in this. Two major principles. And they're very important. Man, I tell you what, God's word is so alive. And it is so solid. And it is so full of basic principles given to us that if we make the decision to live by those, God will help us to be restored. Okay, so there's going to be two. First of all, the psalmist says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Two things are happening there. Two things are happening. Number one, he's making me lie down. Everybody say lie down. Okay. Some people, you think you always constantly have to be on the go? Stop. Because God says, you're not wired for that. You, you, you are not the energizer bunny. You are designed that eventually you're going to have to lie down. But God doesn't choose it just to be randomly anywhere. He says he makes me lie down where? In green pastures. Okay? So that's the first part. You're lying down, but you're lying down in green pastures. Here's important. What are you feasting on? Because what you're feasting on today is going to carry you into the next this, this coming week. And you, you may not agree with that, but what you're feasting, if you're feasting on a lot of negativity, if you're feasting on past failures, if you're feasting on what people done to you, and you're harboring a lot of unforgiveness, if you're feasting on that, you're wasting a lot of energy. A lot of energy is being consumed, and a lot of worry is, being, is eating you up. And you are not productive, and you cannot be productive for the cause of Christ. You can never fulfill your potential, and you can never reach your purpose in life if you're feasting on negativity. And that's why it says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. You need to be feasting. Church, we need to be feasting on God's word. We need to be feasting on God's encouragement. I, I would encourage you to keep your sermon notes and put those in your Bible. And tomorrow when you get up and you... Just kind of refresh yourself, and you've already wrote that down. And it'll be a challenge to you to make sure that you are deliberately feasting on good stuff. You want to be able to feast on good stuff. And when the devil tries to throw something in your plate that's negative and harmful and hurtful, you can be able to say, no, I'm, I'm going to choose to feast on the good stuff. And that way, that way, when you find yourself running tired, when you find yourself needing rest and energy, Man, your mind will automatically go to feasting on God's Word. Now, the second 
part of Psalm 23. It says, he leads me beside still waters. Well, we don't understand that because most of us have never really had to shepherd. But here's the importance of that. I didn't know this, but sheep, you have to look out for sheep almost every single thing. Did you, I didn't know this, and I'm, I'm not making this. Did you know that if a shepherd leads sheep to a strong current of water, They'll stick their nose in it, and the potential of them of drowning is real. They will drown trying to get, drink, get a drink of water in fast-moving water. Is that not sad? We look at that, and we say that is sad. But listen, there are people who are making bad decisions. They're leaving God out of the equation, and you know what? They're drowning in the decisions that they have made. And God says, listen, if you really want to be restored, I have designed my creation. This is what God says. I have designed my creation to help you to be restored. Now, the third part of this is when we enjoy God's creation, we make the conscious decision to enjoy God's creation, we have the benefit of reassurance. When you look up and you, and you understand the biblical principle of what God says, Genesis chapter 1, God created. Five days of creation before he made Adam and Eve, and those five days of creation, God was building and designing and making and constructing and fabricating everything for us. And for whose benefit? For us. For us to enjoy. But there's the benefit of reassurance. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But there is the benefit of reassurance that God is in control and that God will take care of us. Let me, let me share just a little bit about nature and it's, the more that humanity studies nature, the more that we see the intricate details of what God does. Now, here in just a little bit, you're going to start to see a big, massive push of monarch butterflies all the way as far north as Canada. And you know what they're going to do? You know what they're going to do here in a little bit? They're going to make a migration. And these small, delicate monarch butterflies are going to fly over the entire Gulf of Mexico until they come into South America. And then the adults are going to die. And their babies are going to hatch out. They're going to be butterflies. And they're going to fly all the way without anybody telling them what to do. There is a God-given GPS inside of them that teaches them to go that way. That's incredible. It wasn't until the 20th century they used to think for years and years and years and years that just randomly these sea turtles were coming and laying eggs just randomly on the seashore. It wasn't really until the people started studying this in the 21st century, they actually concluded, they said, man, this is amazing stuff. The mother comes back to the exact same spot that she was hatched out. How does she know to do that? God, is that not incredible? I think God deserves a round of applause for all that. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Out in the desert, out in the Arizona desert, did you know that there's, there's a phenomenon that only occurs one night out of the year? It happens every night, just one night, one time a year. It's the Peruvian moth and the yucca plant. You know how many times that the yucca plant blooms during the course of the year? One. Do you know that there's only one night that the Peruvian moth hatches out, guess how long it lives? Only one night. Anybody want to take a guess what night that that is? Happens to be the same night. The yucca plant blooms the same night as the Peruvian moth hatches out. Both of them need one another. So the moth lands on the yucca plant and helps to go and to pollinate and ensure the survivability. But we see stuff like this every single day if God takes care of that moth, we have the reassurance that God is going to take care of us. Somebody say amen. Now, the fourth benefit, and I need you guys to write this one down. The fourth benefit is rejoining, rejoining. You are rejoining back into relationships and activities. One of the great telltale signs that somebody is starting to shut down physically and emotionally one of the signs that people are taking on a little bit too much is because they, be, they become disconnected. They start 
losing interest in their activities and they start losing interest in their relationships. Now this is very, very important about this rejoining because if you do not get inside of good, solid relationships and good, solid activities, you're going to crack under the stress and the daily loads that we have to face. It's very important for us to do that. Does anybody know what happened to a deserter of the U.S. Army during the American Revolutionary War when they caught him? They got shot, didn't they? As a matter of fact, I hate to say it, but you know what happened to a, uh, an American soldier if he was a deserter in World War I and World War II? They got shot. They started studying in the Vietnam War, and it was a little bit of a different approach. They said, well, what, what happens if we take somebody? You, you, by the way, does anybody know what that's, that's called when you're in, in a battle and you just get all stressed out? It's called battle fatigue. Friends, you don't have to be in the jungles of Vietnam to suffer from battle fatigue. You may have issues at work and you may have some issues with your neighbors and you may have some issues with your in, within your home and all those dynamics going on at the same time. If you're not, listen to me, if you're not centered upon good godly biblical principles, you're going to crack. That's, that's why we preach what God's word says. And when you, when you enjoy God's creation, you enjoy the benefit of rejoining. This is what they found out in the Vietnam War. They found out, they said, well, what happens if we take this U.S. soldier that we spent thousands of dollars upon, we've given him thousands of dollars worth of weapons and grenades, and you know, we teach him to read maps. You know, he, he, he's one of the most elite fighting uh, uh, forces that we have in the United States. So wh what can we do to, to do this and you know, help, him, help him be a, a beneficial part of our fighting forces? What they did was they removed him from the battlefield. Only just a few miles away, they set up tents. And I know this because me being in the United States uh, Air Force, we had to do war games every year, and they taught us this is how you're going to treat, this is how you treat battle fatigue. You remove them from the battle. For three days, you give them a, three hots and a cot, three hot meals every single day, you give them a cot. And then on the third day, after the third day, guess where we sent them back to? Back to the battlefield. Did you know this? Every single person that returned to the battlefield rejoined in with no issues. As a matter of fact, if you didn't, they, they were down on themselves because they felt like they were letting their buddies down. You give them three hot meals, you put them in a cot, let, let them sleep, let them just rewire themselves, refuel, and they were able to rejoin. And those that did were healthy and back in action again. I tell you, listen to me, folks. It's important. It's important for all of us because God has wired us to have a feeling of achievement. And when we feel successful and we start to achieve, there's a certain drug that God has wired into our brain when we, when we have this feeling of success and achievement. God has wired our brains to start releasing dopamine and dopamine makes us feel satisfied. You're not satisfied when you're just unplugged and you're not doing what God has created you to do when you're not doing that. But man, you feel so good when you're rejoined and you're refreshed and you're restored. Point number three, God intends for us to manage pleasures so they don't become addictions. God intends for us to manage pleasures so they don't become addictions. This is what addictions does. Addictions do three things. Number one, addictions take away our coping skills. We're just, we're shut down. We're not able to cope. We have a stressful time. We think that the only way that we can cope is to do what? I need that fix. I'm not able to cope. I have to have that alcohol. I have to have those pills in order for me to be able to cope. So not only do addictions take away our coping skills, they take away our relationship skills, and thirdly, they take away our critical thinking skills. Here are five ways, five ways God's Word instructs us, five ways how to manage our pleasures, five ways to manage 
our pleasures. Number one, point number one on, on this, uh, managing your pleasures. Love what you do. Love what you do. If you're constantly dreaming, man, I wish I was somewhere else. Guess what? You should be somewhere else. I don't care how much money that you're making. I don't care what the benefits package is. If you don't love your job, you need to leave it. You need to be somewhere where you can be outstanding in your field and that you love it. And just, I love what I do. I know sometimes there are some headaches. I know that sometimes that there are hassles. What job isn't? What job doesn't have that? But man, I love what I do. I have this great sense of satisfaction. The dopamine is just flowing. I, I, I feel good. Love what you do. When you love what you do, you're not going to have to feel stressed all the time. Secondly, let you manage your time. It is your time, so you manage that. You need to do that. I would encourage you each and every day that you are deliberately setting aside. This is what you need to do, okay? This is what the Bible teaches. Number one, you need to set aside time for God. Can I get an amen out of that? God is first, so you need to set aside some time for God. Carve out, be deliberate, be very intentional Carve that time out for God. Secondly, you need to carve out time for your family. And thirdly, you need to carve out time for yourself. You need to invest in yourself. Number three, limit your exposure. Parents, can I get an amen out of that? I'm, I'm helping you. I'm helping you to get your kids off of Xbox and PlayStation. Can I get an amen? So limit your exposure. Xbox, uh, PlayStation. What's another one of those gaming systems? Do they still have Sega Genesis? Uh, I'm guessing not. <laughs> okay. Is that old school or what? You know what we ought to do? I, th I, th I think we ought to just on a Friday night just bring in some tacos and chips and just, if, has anybody got a Sega Genesis <laughs> system? Just bring it here. We're going to go old school, baby. Yeah, I guess we, if we could do that. We could do that and just get us a screen. Lim limit your exposure. Just limit your exposure. Life is not meant to live at 200 miles an hour. You're not designed for that. So, so just listen, God gave us pleasure. Don't go overboard on pleasure. You need to have that time frame. Fourthly, leave some things for later. Leave some things for later. That, that, that is a biblical principle. There is time for you to be able to do that. Understand the ant versus the slug. Understand the difference. The ant is being studious. As a matter of fact, if you look at the ants now, man, they are going like crackerjack. They're bringing stuff in. They're bringing all stuff in. And you know why they're doing it? Because cold weather is coming. So you have to be able to leave some things for later. And, you know, just don't glutton on them. Anybody here? Anybody here? Now, be honest. Anybody here, you have a little bit on your plate, but you're like, since I'm already eating, I'm just going to go ahead and finish it off. Anybody ever do just do that? Like, oh. And then when you're done, you go, why did I eat that? Why didn't I just wrap it up in aluminum foil and put that up in there? Oh, my goodness. And then fifthly, you have to learn to say this. And I know, I know it's hard. You have to learn to say this. It's a small, two-letter word. Learn to say no. You just got to learn to say no sometimes. Lastly, this morning, point number four. God uses his creation to demonstrate his care for us. God uses his creation to demonstrate his care for us. He's going to take care of you. Listen, I just want to give you a couple examples. One of the ones is after every winter, God is faithful. Boy, can I get an amen out of that? After every winter, God is faithful. Spring will come. Now, I don't know what season of life that you are in. But if you are faithful to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, he will bring you through the winter. And believe me, the things that are dead in your life right here, right now today, the things that are dead through God, he will make them alive again. Man, we just got to be faithful. We got to listen. Anybody here trust God that much? If you can look at up at the stars and you can say, man, God, God, give us the gravity. God, give us the water. God, give us the oxygen. God, give us all this beauty. God demonstrates his power and his care and his love demonstrates it each and every single day for us just out of his creation. After the winter. Things will once again come alive. Now I want you to write this scripture down. 
Luke chapter 12, verse 27. Luke chapter 12, verse 27. Jesus is speaking to a great congregation and he's teaching them that God will take care of them. And this is what God says. Luke chapter 12, verse 27. Jesus says, look at the lilies and how they grow. When you get out, when you get outside today, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go outside and I want you to look at some flowers. And it's just amazing to me how that The inside portions of those flowers can be white, but on the outside of them, the tips can be purple. Is that not amazing? Is that not incredible? Jesus says, look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as beautiful as they. And if God so cares wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Oh, my goodness. God demonstrates his care for us through his creation. I don't know what you're going through. Don't know what you're struggling with, but why did God put you here? God put you here so you could reach your potential. Man, it is my prayer today that you are doing your best. You're putting forth an outstanding effort to help reach your potential in Jesus. You are here so you can fulfill a God-given purpose. And if you don't know what that God-given purpose is, we will pray with you today. We, we would love to pray for you. And we, if you need the sermon uh, on that, we would be more than glad to make sure that you get that. And if you haven't taken the time in a long time just to put on the brakes, get out of the car, Look up and look at the beautiful sky. Enjoy the warmth of the sunshine. Take a deep breath and inhale all that fresh air and look around and look at all of God's creation to understand that God deeply cares for you. Would you bow your heads with us? Rick, I'm going to ask you to come and help help us to pray this morning. Kyle, I'm going to ask you to, to come and help us to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all of your wonder, all of your grandeur, your majesty, all throughout nature. When we look at your creation, God, we see your fingerprint. We see your DNA is is put all over every single thing of creation. And God, we could not deny you. We could not deny the existence of God because your fingerprint is everywhere. And Heavenly Father, I pray that all of us here uh, this morning help our hearts to be still Help our hearts to just embrace the fact that you care for us. And God, that you demonstrate it. You have proven it over and over again throughout the wonder of nature. Help us to have a little bit more faith in that you're going to take care of us. Help us to help us to develop better time habits so we can take the time to enjoy what you created for us. Heavenly Father, we ask these favors in Jesus name.